Ah, dear man, it's been about eight hours since we saw the Vancouver Canucks re-sign Elias Pettersson to an $11.6 million AAV eight-year contract extension that takes him till the end of 2032. This was the big story. But it's been a while. And all of a sudden, we are having probably the dumbest and most useless conversation imaginable post Pedersen contract signing because everybody in their right minds makes everything about the Toronto freaking Maple Leafs. And yes, I get it. There are other things to talk about with the Pedersen conversation. We can go over the articles. We can talk about the media. We can talk about the quotes. We can talk about Alvin Rutherford, Quinn Hughes, what everybody said about the Pedersen contract. Nope. We are talking about the fans because I wanted to nip this in the bud right away. The moment Elias Pedersen was signed, we had ourselves a tweet made by producer Sir Drew from STPN who said this, Pedersen being a 100-point center signing for almost the exact same deal as Nylander will go over well on this app, I'm sure. Then you have a bunch of replies going out there and saying, oh yeah, but Nylander is top five in scoring. Pedersen isn't. Nylander's getting 100 points this year, so he's pretty good too, and this and that. And then you had other replies going out there and comparing the two. Mike Bartner said this, that Pedersen really only getting $100,000 more than William Nylander despite being three years younger, a center and far better defensively. Yeah, that's crazy. Then you have yourselves a bunch of replies saying, oh, but Nylander is outscoring him this year and he's good and he's this and that. And then there are other replies, even crazier ones that say things like this. Nylander making 11.5, Pedersen making 11.6. Every other fan base said Nylander was overpaid, but nobody will say a word about Pedersen. And then the replies go out there and roast the hell out of this entire thing too. Pedersen is the number one center on his team. Nylander has a luxury of playing behind Matthews and Marner. It's apples and oranges. Pedersen is also playing with Hughes and Miller. I'm not comparing Marner and Matthews to them, but they're elite players too. Then you had another tweet that went out there and said this, that Nylander versus Pedersen in the last three seasons worth of play, goals, Nylander has scored more, primary assists, Willie has scored more, secondary assists, Pedersen, shorthanded goals, Willie, face-off percentage, Willie, playoff production, Willie, coolness, Willie, handsomeness, Willie, dogs, Willie, relevance of the franchise, Willie, the Maple Leafs fans, guys, this is not even a conversation, man, what are you doing? Come on, stop making a fool out of yourself. Like, William Nylander getting 11.5 was an overpay because of the standard that was set there in Toronto with guys that were already getting overpaid for years and years and years. Everybody outside of Toronto is cheering for Nylander to get the bag, not because he's really an $11.5 million player, but because he's arguably been the best player on a team that boasts the likes of guys that are making 11, 12, 13 million dollars. When you have the playoffs come and go, Nylander is the best one there. He's better than Marner, he's better than Matthews, he's better than Tavares, and he was making fractions on the dollar for every paycheck all those other guys made. Nylander was the underdog, he was arguably the best player, but he wasn't getting paid like it, and that standard being there, where good players that are young can get 10.9, 11, 11 point whatever million dollars a year, that standard is why Nylander got that dollar amount. And you could say, oh yeah, if he went to the free agent market, he'll probably get something higher than that. Yeah, that's very fair. It's just the way everything was going down with the fact that Nylander already held out on former contract negotiations in Toronto. We know that him and his party are tough to negotiate with. We know that he was a UFA to be, so there was extra leverage on his behalf there. But when you compare it to Elias Pettersson, it's a completely different situation. Because realistically, I know I've been harping on Elias Pettersson for most of this year because he hasn't really been his best, but that's the crazy part. He hasn't really been his best, but he's still on pace for 100 points again, like he had last year. He happens to be younger than William Nylander. He happens to be a center. Pedersen is more valuable than Willie Styles. I'm sorry to say. And the fact that he got only $100,000 more whilst being younger, a center, a better producer. Now, that's debatable this year, but you could say that for the rest of their entire careers, it's probably going to be in Pedersen's favor. The fact is, Nylander is arguably having the best year he's ever had. But Pedersen 
while still producing the points, is not really playing his best, and we can really see that from the perspective of a lot of Canucks fans who are watching the games and tuning in and commenting their thoughts and giving updates as to what's going on, Canucks fans, I'd say, have been if I had to pretentiously put a number on it, I'd say that maybe Canucks fans feel, just in general, that Pedersen has been playing maybe at 75 to 80% capacity this year. Like, he's still one of the top point producers, and he was one of the top guys in points at the beginning of the year, but the past few weeks have been really rough for Pedersen. He hasn't been his best, and he has a higher gear, but he's still getting points, and he's still one of the top guys. Like, what more do you want? He's 25 years old. He's going to be 32 by the time this contract expires. 25 to 32, the prime years of a hockey player in his career. William Nylander is going to be making his amount of money, 11.5, till he's 35 years old. Like, I don't know about you, but for as good as Nylander has been, I'm questioning how good 33, 34, 35-year-old Nylander is going to be. Meanwhile, Pedersen, probably going to get better, he's going to be 32 years old, more likely towards the tail end of his prime, rather than being completely out of it and still making this amount of money. Like, it just boggles my mind that there is even an argument being brought up here when Nylander is having one of the best stints he's ever had in his career. Pedersen is arguably on a slump right now, and we know he still has another gear to get into. He's younger, he is a center, he's defensively responsible. Like, I clown on Pedersen as much as the next guy, but I can't deny at the end of the day the value he brings. And $11.6 million a year? certainly is taking advantage of what it is that he's got to offer, the salary cap going up, and everything in between. If you wanted to talk about percentage of cap, because that's also a very big point to note as well, Grady went out there and tweeted this out, that Pedersen's percentage of the cap is 13.89. For reference, Connor McDavid's is 16.7, Austin Matthews on his next deal is 15.87, McKinnon is 15.27, and Nylander is 13.77. Pedersen left money on the table to allow the Vancouver Canucks to have some flexibility in the future. And with the cap going up by four years, four years, whatever, as the years go on, this is going to be seen as a huge, huge, big win for Vancouver. Tidy piece of work for a guy who is, in most people's minds, a top center in the entire NHL. So to the Leafs fans going out there and trying to make the argument that Elias Pettersson is overpaid or that Nylander is better or that both of these contracts are valued the same and they should be treated equally, they're not the same. Pettersson is not the same asset as Nylander. He's had a completely different story. Nylander getting overpaid in some people's eyes was seen as a big win, not for the Leafs, but for Nylander. This contract for Pettersson is a huge win for the Canucks. The team themselves have so much going for them with this contract getting signed, the flexibility into the future, and the fact that you have him and Miller signed together till the 2030s, Miller's making 8 million bucks. That guy, I of course question the longevity of his career and his capabilities by the time he's 33, 4, 5, 6, who knows how much he's going to be able to produce and whether or not he'd be worth anywhere in the range of $8 million. But the fact is, the Vancouver Canucks this year, next year, and the year after that, they have these guys locked in to reasonable cap hits and they've got the band sticking together. Most likely. Can you say the same about Toronto? I don't know, man. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this entire Pedersen and Nylander conversation because I just believe it's ridiculous that we're even talking about this. But I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.